OK, um, while Thomas is figuring out his technical issues, I will start the presentation. I believe, Simon, that you can hear me still. Yes. So we should be live. Um, so we will start off this session actually by um, word from our sponsors. Um, I will turn off my camera to save some bandwidth, of course. So let's have a look. So first of all, uh, I'm Fredrik Bratstig, tech evangelist at IGEL. Um, I'm based in Sweden, uh, working globally mainly, but my main responsibility is, is the EMEA market uh, in terms of IGEL and spreading the word of IGEL to, to the audience. And in terms of Windows Virtual Desktop, IGEL is, uh, or in the Microsoft world, so to speak, IGEL is uh, quite unknown still. But we are definitely improving this and I will uh, talk to you a bit about Agile uh, and Windows Virtual Desktop in this session and I will have a quick demo before we kick off the real session. So first off, Agile was the chosen Linux endpoint operating system uh, chosen by Microsoft to deliver a Linux based Windows Virtual Desktop client. So we were first to the market, which has its pros and cons, of course. Um, but we have been there since the beginning of an existing Linux endpoint for Windows Virtual Desktop. So the agreement is that Microsoft is building an SDK, which we implement in our Agile uh, Windows <laughs> Virtual Desktop. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Um, and uh, then we also add and extend some features, of course. So the features in the Windows Virtual Desktop client for Linux that we implement in Agile OS is strictly uh, ruled by the SDK features, but we also have some space to do some uh, additional modifications. So if you would like to go with Agile OS for your Windows Virtual Desktop endpoints, um, you could download and install the Agile OS and reinstall your existing devices. Like you might have hundreds and thousands of devices in your field that are running Windows. You're going Windows Virtual Desktop, uh, so you're actually moving your Windows desktops to the cloud. Why should you then use windows on the endpoint to double the burden of managing those devices and those windows operating systems i mean that's one of the reasons to go windows virtual desktop to reduce the burden of of managing windows and having everything in the cloud so my recommendation would definitely be to look at agile os and have the, your existing endpoints reinstalled using agile os there are different ways of actually achieving this um, we do support sccm um, um, transferring of agile os images to your endpoints if you already have sccm for instance or image distribution and yeah there are a lot of different ways to to reinstall your endpoints you can also go with the Agile UD Pocket, which is a USB disk that is bootable. Um, and it boots your existing x86 based endpoint to Agile OS. Uh, it doesn't touch the underlying operating system. It just uh, boots on the USB stick. If you remove the USB stick and reboot the device, you will have your um, originating operating system on the device again, which is a uh, very good a use case for um, now with the COVID times, of course, um, there is a lack of hardware in the market and the lack is getting even worse. So providing your home office users with a UDI pocket, they just plug it into their existing uh, PC they have in the home and boot the device on the UDI pocket and access the Windows Virtual Desktop. You get two different um, features by doing this. Um, first off, you can you do not need to provide the, the hardware to the user. 
Uh, and you have a controllable secure operating system running on the endpoints, uh, even if they are in a lockdown or not lockdown, but an unmanaged network uh, situation in their home offices. And of course, we have Agile hardware. So you can buy different hardware models from Agile depending on, on uh, the use case you want to fulfill um, from task worker up to your high end graphics workers. So why Agile? As said, um, it's mainly, in my opinion, uh, the main reason is to reduce endpoint management and um, secure your endpoint environment making your endpoints controllable and uh, foreseeable on how they act and behave. And it also gives you a easiness to manage devices anywhere in the world um, behind that firewalls and, and everything. Um, so you can control in real time all your devices, push configurations, change configurations, um, convert or kind of modify your devices going from one type of environment, say from a Citrix connection, uh, in, a, in a matter of seconds, you can turn those devices into Windows Virtual Desktop endpoints instead. We have a very small OS footprint. Uh, the image is about two gigabytes. So the installation of a network is uh, very easy. It's quick. Uh, and even if you do the installation on using USB sticks, for instance, uh, it's also very quick. So you get a, uh, you get your users up and running very fast. We also do, which is good for network um, connected devices, of course, uh, distribution, distributed devices anywhere in the world. When we do a firmware update, uh, we do a Delta firmware update. So we only update the things that have changed. So a two gigabytes firmware image uh, might end up in only 500 megs of transferring or 200 megs of transferring of firmware due to uh, based on what's changed. And it definitely simplifies user onboarding um, if you are on-prem or work from anywhere, of course. So you would have a very easy way to connect your users and control their devices uh, for the tasks of work. So now we will go for a, a short demo on Agile and um, Windows Virtual Desktop, just for you to have a, a look into what is what is Agile. As said, there will be a NVIDIA um, VVD presentation directly after this demo. So let's get going. So what do we have? Uh, I open up two windows uh, on the presenter screen where you see one virtual machine currently uh, using Agile OS and the other window is the UMS, so the Agile Universal Management Suite where you do all the configurations of your devices and uh, yeah, control uh, how your users endpoints should act and react. So as you can see, I have a folder that is called VBD TechFest, where I have one device now. I could have thousands of devices in this folder and uh, attach those um, to Windows Virtual Desktop sessions, for instance. But let's have a look at the Agile device. Currently, there is no sessions on this device. I have no possibilities to connect to uh, Windows Virtual Desktop. I have no possibility to connect to uh, any type of environment uh, as a user. This device is not locked down. I can lock it down, down uh, so that the user actually cannot do anything else than what they are supposed to do. But let's publish a Windows Virtual Desktop session to this device. First of all, we need to start building one of those sessions, which I will do using the UMS. So I will just name it VVD session. Um, this will open up a configuration dialog where I will go to sessions, Windows Virtual Desktop, and Windows Virtual Desktop sessions. And I will click on the plus sign 
I will uh, name the icon VVD session. Um, simple and, and easy for the user. Um, I have the possibility to choose where to put the um, launch of the VVD client. Um, and I will put it on the desktop. Uh, so the pre specified uh, locations. I also have the possibility to auto start this in this uh, application. So when the device boots, it will directly go into uh, Windows Virtual Desktop login. Then I will do some add on specifications that is uh, agile specific actually. So we have the possibility to specify a username and domain. But we also have the possibility to specify just the domain, which makes it easier for the user because then the user will only need to type their, uh, their username and do not have to type their complete UPN or, or email address. We can also pre-specify password and uh, which kind of resource to automatically launch. Uh, and this will give you the possibility to um, to actually uh, use a kiosk for display purposes, launching a session that automatically opens up uh, whatever kind of information dialogue for, for a factory, for instance. But anyways, I will add the username, uh, the domain actually, at Virtual Brett, which is uh, my blog, uh, virtualbrett.com. And so that I do not need to provide the use uh, the domain name all the time when I log in. Uh, we have a few other different settings. Uh, I will not walk through those. Um, I'm just creating this simple profile. Um, I will assign it to the VVD TechFest folder, which means that my device and every other device within this folder will get this configuration. So I will push this configuration. I will also do a customization of this um, of this device. I will drag and drop a customization and apply. So we have instantly got configuration changes. This actually doesn't matter if you are on-prem like I am in this scenario or if the device is um, off-prem somewhere else uh, in the world. So we got a new wallpaper uh, and we got the VVD session. So I will open up the VVD session and try to log in. And here you see uh, virtualbrett.com is pre-specified. So I will just type my username and my password. The graphics are pretty cool. Yeah, it's a redesign actually. If for you that have been into uh, Agile since before, it's a redesigned user interface now. As you can see, it's also asking me for my MFA. So uh, I will try to enter the MFA and try to read. I'm getting older, so it's getting more and more difficult. Uh, keep in mind that I was prompted for the MFA. Uh, this is actually a, a thing with conditional access where we can target Agile devices for conditional access. Uh, when I do my login during the next piece of the demo with um, NVIDIA, uh, I will do this from a Windows machine and that will uh, not prompt me for MFA. So I uh, specified MFA for my Agile devices. So here I get presented with uh, different workspaces and the different resources I have access to, and I will log in to one of them uh, to finish up the demo, just showing that we do connect to uh, Windows Virtual Desktop from Agilos. So with that, I will stop sharing my screen for the moment and turn it over to um, Thomas to present. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So we just let's see you. Oops. Hello. I took my nice <laughs> trigger on the vacation here. I don't know if you guys know. So this I was lucky going to the MVP summit some uh, what was that? Some years ago, two years ago I think now, and I got this this shirt. So I hope hope one day to go back. Anyways, so hello everyone. 
Uh, I had some technical problems because I actually had my sound in my VR headset. That was why. I, so I kind of freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have it there. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> exactly. No time for VR. That's another. OK, so uh, pretty excited about we are going to talk about uh, NVIDIA and WD. And yeah, uh, my name is Thomas Poppelgaard and uh, I'm uh, Microsoft MVP in the RDS WD group uh, and also a NVIDIA NGCA member uh, like Frederick are. So we both are there and, and proud proud about that. A small group of 25 people and even the, actually the, the RDS uh, WD is also a quite small group. So that's pretty cool. And you can see that, you know, that T-shirt with that, uh, that icon on the dinosaur. That's me. Yeah, I got the T-shirt. I'm wearing it for the today's session. <laughs> Anyways, so um, we produce a lot of lot of really cool stuff. Uh, it's a brand new content we put together. Uh, so I'll be showing that. So it's both content and live demos. We'll be showing here, you know, showing uh, accelerated and non-accelerated applications, multi-session environments, uh, more precise WD uh, with you know multi-session Windows 10, but also single session Windows 10. So let's talk about GPUs. So good start, always to, to start. And, and again, I see this where people just go ahead quickly in WD and you know don't add GPUs and then you don't have insights. So start with a physical machine, understand your application, how it's consuming CPU memory, IOPS, and even network. And then you have the GPU compute and dedicated and shared memory. Many people look at averages. Maximum actually really important because peak moments is exactly where you're user interaction is, is and latency is, you know, where you need that that experience. You know, so if you only look at averages, you're actually not measuring the peak moments, the peak moment your, your user is expecting that great experience. You can actually do this uh, kind of very easy with Task Manager. So real time, we can see the data. Even you have multiple GPUs, you can see that. You can see which GPU is being used. You can use this both in Windows 10 and uh, Windows 10 multi-session and, and server 2019. There's also a process explorer where you can go more advanced into the details of the GPU of the process level and then get the, the amount of information. And then of course you also have both performance, but then it gets a little bit more advanced. Um, something I think is important is also as, look, as well to look at all the different layers of the GPU, uh, what they look at, because again, this is where it gets a little bit more difficult on, because there's not so many monitoring tools that actually captures this data. Um, so there are some people in the community that's done some work here where you can look at the kind of information. So, uh, but again, does your application use CUDA, right? Then it's NVIDIA GPU only. Uh, does it use OpenCL? That's proprietary on all the GPU vendors and DirectX, Vulkan, and so on and so on. Quite important things when you go to GPU world. <clears throat> so um, if you look at the GPU compute, we have the uh, memory and the compute level, but it's actually not just that. We also have engines to look at. Uh, engines is a variety of depending on the GPU model you have. So that's both uh, decoding and 3D and there's tons of engines. Some engines can be, you know, it depends on, again on the GPU model you have. Then you have the GPU memory where you have shared and you also have dedicated. The shared is together with the operating system as well. So dedicated is the GPU memory of the, what we call the frame buffer. GPU engines can be a lot. So when I mean, you're monitoring that, it can be many. This is yeah. also important depending on, on which kind of GPU you select uh, based on your your use cases and your budget, of course. Some of the GPUs have multiple GPUs on the same board and some GPUs have only single GPUs, which makes a difference, certainly. Exactly, exactly. <clears throat> now, the cool thing is uh, there's actually uh, third party tools out there that uh, can uh, grab uh, NVIDIA uh, APIs. So they, they use the, the, the NVIDIA information and the SDKs and the vGPU where they have built the driver sets. So Lakeside has uh, hooks into that, control up. Stratosphere UX, Sepako uh, also does that now. That's uh, that's pretty new. Uh, Marcel has done a lot of work into that. Um, so hopefully he will share something in this session. I think that's after us. 
Uh, and then we also have Uber agent Helge Klein. He's been doing that for quite a while, uh, looking inside the windows and, and grabbing that. And then we also, also have EG Innovation. So you have different options, right? If you want to grab uh, data over time uh, with the different vendors. And I know some of the vendors are also doing more and more uh, grabbing of this. And you might also see some new vendors popping up here. Um, yes, 2020. We had 2021. <laughs> the browser war is still on. It was not last year. Uh, so the continue war uh, does, does definitely go on. And uh, yeah, we can look at that uh, a little bit after. But just to give you some insights here, uh, to be honest, uh, these uh, versions of the browsers, they are really different. And yes, Edge and Chrome, they came out with newer versions where they're trying be, to be more user friendly, not using a lot of resources. That's great. Uh, but you know, end of the day, these applications are really, really hungry because each time they open up a tab, they, you know, it's an application per application, per application, per application. So, uh, and each one of them are also working different to be honest, on, on operating systems. So, uh, which makes it really difficult to predict the behavior on the application. And then we have got Teams. Oh my God, Teams. Teams is another beast. Uh, this application also come out with so many new versions and new functionality and uh, you know then we want to go to the WD and yes you could then do offloading but then it depends on the endpoint you have so you might get on you know offloading or you don't so that that, that really points, depends on the endpoint because not all endpoints supports offloading and then you, you need to you know what do you then do because then you have the team's capabilities inside the VM and then it makes sense also to use the GPU to offload that. So Teams, I, you know, I, I know Microsoft is doing a lot with uh, with offloading, but again, customers have different clients where they also don't have the offloading capability. So keep that in mind. Also, another thing with offloading is you might not get that feature in in Teams. You know, so we see on physical workstation, Teams get a lot of new features, but then they don't get that feature with the WD optimized. These are uh, you know, things I hear from the field with that customers are um, disappointed about, right? That it doesn't go too fast because they want all the features and functionality in the .vd for, for offloading. Uh, I know that's in, terms of, in terms of, sorry to interrupt, Thomas, in terms of Teams, um, um, basically any modern application are using GPUs in one way or another, uh, even if you're using offloading for Teams, for instance, uh, you still have have the application component running on the backend, uh, which is quite resource intensive too. Mm -hmm. And um, even looking at, at office applications or browsers, browsers as you says, and, and any type of, of workload, uh, most of them are using GPUs today. Exactly, exactly. And there's, then there's the entire conversation about GPUs. By adding a GPU, you can actually uh, reduce the bandwidth. So. Uh, Dennis from Microsoft, he, he wrote an article that's on, on the WD Docs where you can see the bandwidth and by adding uh, the, the, the the GPUs to, to, to your workload, you would uh, get a huge bandwidth saving and that's another discussion, right? Which is quite important here in COVID, uh, we are, right? Anyways, <clears throat> so there's a lot of innovation happening with graphics in the WD and also with adaptive codec and the video player optimization there. And, and this is really great. That means that Microsoft are, are keeping improving all, you know, the user experience, and they're doing this by by pretty much each release. They're doing both uh, uh, the back end, but also the the endpoint. And there's coming so out so many new clients, which is really really awesome. I'm so impressed about, uh, to be honest, HTML5. I've been using HTML5 here a couple of months now. I'm, I've never been an HTML5 fan, but uh, after use, I've been using it tremendously HTML5 on different variety of running systems. And different variety of uh, browsers with uh, the HVVC 444 v2 i'm like that makes me like the native client I, I know there's differences but you know it's also sometimes about good enough experience that's pretty interesting microsoft are doing you know because the HTML5 is is uh, i think that's also the, the way of future of working eventually but that's another conversation single session multi-session <clears throat> that's the question so which one to use, right? Well, majority looks at typical multi-session Windows 10 to get savings uh, uh, with instead of using RDS, right? And then single session is typical where you have uh, your dedicated applications or VDI or workers. 
Microsoft. I would say, Thomas, uh, yeah. the, the response to those two questions is simply it depends. Yes, and, and <laughs> I, I, I see. So I've been working, to be honest, tremendously with that we uh, last year and this year as well, right? But um, I never worked so much with WD as I do now, last yep. like last year now. Uh, the majority I do is is definitely 90% multi-session. Mm. No doubt about that. Uh, maybe maybe a little bit higher actually. So it's multi-session all the time that customers wants, right? Yeah, but it, dep it depends on, on the use case definitely. If you if you want yeah. to do a high-end... So it's, it's, if it's CAD application, those kind of customers, yes, it's yeah. single session. But they also want to do multi-session. They want yeah, to save money. Of course. But the problem is they, they are not then, you know, getting certified, supported by the vendors. So they're forced to do single session, but they do want to do multi session. That's what I want to tell. So there are some customers that actually do multi session with a non support environment where the application works really great. So Autodesk applications actually works fine on multi session, but it's not supported. Autodesk has a cloud where they use single session, right? So they have this Autodesk because of workspace that runs on uh, Citrix cloud, but they use single session for all that because that's a support scenario. Right, but there's customers who have many customers doing Autodesk application and multi-session, but it's not supported. That's just what I want to want to share. So um, with the multi-session <clears throat> Windows 10, Microsoft does support it, and they they emphasize uh, this and recommend it. And again, uh, one thing is getting a great user experience, but another thing is also doing bandwidth savings. So you know, if you want to get huge bandwidth savings, you could get that more frames. Less bandwidth. Come on, what's the caveats? A eh, little bit more money. But hey, if you get more happy users, that's pretty nice, right? We like that. We ain't so happy users, right, Frederick? Because you buy <laughs> We don't want crappy experience. We want we want the best. And now Frederick, he he's definitely a, a guy who loves you know to push the system to the max to get exactly you know accepted user experience, defining sexy user experience. Yeah, I mean that's all about the story and and using computers. I mean having the uh, the user to have a good experience is a is everything for success in your BDI environment. No matter if you're using BVD or anything else. I mean if the users aren't happy, you have failed. Exactly. But uh, I also got to be honest with you that. I've seen majority of, you know, WD implementation, multi-session don't use GPUs because it, it's good enough what they, they try, but they have no clue what the GPUs can do, right? So this is why the story kind of, you know, you got to start all over again. So why don't we start with the GPUs in WD, right? Because that's the cost, right? So, and, and, that, and, and I think that's, you know, something to really, really, why on-premises we have done, you know, so many time, long time virtualization for years without GPUs, and then Nvidia done a huge work on getting, you know, the entire world starting adopting GPUs workloads. And now the WD is 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 kind of the world, you know, just reset and then starting all over again. And I, I know this is actually true, right? So that's a majority of customers don't use GPUs for the WD environments. They don't, but they should. That's what I'm trying to say. They should really consider it. You should test it. You should try it out. See Agreed. the differences, what it matters, because I'm like the fraction of the cost of the GPUs you have now, it's not that bad. And that's something that makes it worthwhile to investing in it. Okay, so let's talk about uh, installing the right GPU drivers. So this is actually really important. And I know a lot of people like to many times make mistakes here. So WD, they have these documentation where they say how exactly you can install what so NVIDIA, actually the guys from Microsoft and NVIDIA, they're really doing a really good job on updating. So when NVIDIA released a new driver, like the 12th driver, they got on their website the day after. It was there, really awesome. I'm like, that's fast. That's how exactly it should be like. If you go one, two years back, it was not like that. It, it's never been like functioning. It functions now well. And they even have, have multiple drivers there now. So that's really awesome. You also have uh, multiple options of uh, installing uh, the driver. Um, so, um, yes, Frederick, you made a video, but I I, I didn't put it in. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, it's uh, the video was about how to um, 
using the Azure Marketplace to install the NVIDIA drivers on your vGPU enabled hosts. Uh, so if you go to the Marketplace, when you have your host up and running, go to the marketplace and, and so search for. Why, why don't we? Why, why don't we? we make, so maybe just if we make your presenter, so just if you want to show the video, because I'm like, that's pretty awesome. Because many people they install the driver uh, manually, but you can yeah. actually install uh, the driver through the extension sets. And and Frederick made a really cool video. Uh, I really like that video you made. Um, so, so let's see. Want to show? Can... Find it somewhere actually. I think we have pretty good time, you know. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's also about showing the stuff. But anyways, let we can also come back. Yeah, I will find the link and I will tell you when I'm ready. Okay, cool. So the extension sets, uh, yes, that's an automation way, right? And you can also, of course, uh, code your way out of doing that. And then there's the manual way of doing it. So uh, those are the different ways. And it's also fully documented at the Microsoft website for the NVIDIA. So the options you have is the, the VGPU 11 or the 12. What is the difference? You might ask yourself, why should I use 11? Why should I use 12? And that's a really good question because when you start digging into the information about the VGPU 11 and 12, they both support the latest 282. So when you see everything, how they support the support with the system, you're like, oh, which driver should I use? You know, I'm I'm a guy who likes, you know, that shines the, the latest ship. So that's the 12 race because that's also there's a lot of stuff coming and and they're changing, um, uh, like with the RTX. If you have RTX GPUs, it looks different. But uh, if you look really high level, you can see the 11 is long-term service support brands that supported until 2023. So that means, let's say you want really stable release, you don't want to touch and you don't want to update your drivers. Uh, over the next two years, then that driver is your right. Now, if you want to support and update your environment, you know, uh, frequently, then I would definitely suggest uh, version 12 because that's product brands. All right. You have those two options. GPU acceleration. How do you then enable it? Because when you install the driver, uh, Frederick, did you had to? Did you you yes. want to show? Okay. Then let's, let's let's just make you exactly. Let's see if it plays well in in this scenario. Uh, so let's see if I can share my screen again. There we should go. And I play the video and uh, Thomas tell me if it doesn't play through well. Well, can you make it full screen, please, in a video? And then increase the quality as well. Is it HD? Yeah, OK. So let, let's, Frederick, can you tr try to talk through what's happening? Yeah. So first, I'm I'm having a, a T4, NVIDIA T4 based uh, VM. I will just turn off the, the sound where I'm logging into uh, the machine, just making sure that I um, do not have the drivers installed on the uh, Windows Virtual Desktop host. And then I will log out and go back to my Azure portal. There we go. And let's see, it was quite some time since I, since I um, did this. So let's see. Yeah, on the uh, NVIDIA machine, go to extensions. So it's not the marketplace. I was wrong. Go to extensions and uh, go to the NVIDIA GPU driver installation and click create. Yeah, so this is really awesome. Microsoft has improved this functionality. I, I really like this. It used to be different. So uh, it, it's extremely user friendly. Uh, they have the drivers right here. Yeah. So now it's in the back end submitting the uh, driver installation uh, script to this uh, VM. I don't remember if this is 12 or 11 in it. So that's why uh, you it's, it's the 11. So uh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah so you, if you want to get on the latest, like the product, right, then, then you have to put in the 12. So you don't have the option of choosing the different driver. And that, it kind of makes sense why Microsoft rolled out the 11 
because then it's uh, it's a supported drive for two you know uh, a longer time yeah and it's at least currently i mean that might change so um now the deployment deployment is complete so uh, the installation is actually ongoing on this virtual machine exactly uh, so, so if you cool. want to have full control of the drivers installed, you should do it manually on the VVD hosts, of course. Yeah, but if, but if I you like this as if you are lazy. Yeah. You can sit at the beach, you know, drink your drink, drink your beer. Or stay in the garden, stay in the garden <laughs> for me. But also the five. Not before <laughs> five. <laughs> <laughs> so logging into the host again, just to validate that the drivers are there. And I can tell you that uh, initially they will not be there because we still have the display controller, but giving it uh, the script is actually running currently on the VVD host. So uh, now it refreshed and we all uh, we have an NVIDIA Tesla T4 GPU uh, driver installed. So this was done automatically using the extensions of the of the VM. And I like the video you made because you can actually see what's happening in real time. And you can also see that uh, you're waiting a little bit and then the driver get recognized that get put in. And yeah. now you got the NVIDIA control panel I'm like that's that's freaking awesome. And then you also got the NVIDIA license in this. So all this yeah. is included. You don't have to worry about it. So that's that's pretty awesome. So right. I stopped my sharing. Thanks, mate. Over to you, Thomas. Thank you. Alrighty, so that's pretty neat. Um, Another thing what you want to want to uh, consider is uh, to go in and enable these hardware acceleration. You know, this has been known for a couple of years. Uh, hardware acceleration for remote desktop sessions. So you can go in and enable these. And then there's also the, the H.264 AVC hardware encoding, uh, where you can go in and enable these uh, both for. Yeah, for the different modes. So. Use case a single session. Why, why is it the the right place to start? Um, so it you know if you don't want noise enabled neighbors and you want your your own experience where you don't have uh, noise enablers, then definitely single session is the way to go with. And then you don't you know they're preventing you less having a bad experience. Uh, and this is a, to be honest also why most ISV don't certify pro application and this for these uh, sessions like Autodesk and there's also a bunch of other vendors who don't support multi-session environments. But then you got the single session, right? So that's the way to do that. And it's also this this is the why why how it was designed. But it might work in multi-session but session, but it was not designed from the vendor from it. Um, but that's driving it, right? Um what about WVD uh, multi-sessions then? What uh, what are the different use cases? So again, um yeah um, a lot of applications work and functions here. I would say problem, pretty much I've seen the majority, but there's also a lot of applications I've been seeing, you know, where you need to tweak them. Uh, there's there's always some legacy application that's not fitted for multi-session environments, and then you need to, I don't want to use the, <laughs> the word hack, but, you know, potentially that's what you're doing, but you are tweaking the application so it works. This hasn't been a known fact for, you know, the last, to be honest, 20 years in multi-session environments. You'd have to, to get them tweak, but you know if you're lucky, the application just works. But then the problem is, is it supported or not? Um, so but yeah, that's why many pro pro vis uh, customers they definitely want to look that route because then they can get huge cost savings. Because of course you also pay you know uh, quite a decent money money for having uh, uh, a huge VM where you don't have multi session users on it. Alrighty. Right. So how to enable graphics in WD? So let's look at the variety of, of the uh, of the session. So we have NVV, uh, the, the M60 GPUs, which is the NV series. This is the first one for a couple of years ago, and uh, it's now an NV3. And then we have the T4 GPU. That's the one we actually going to show you guys, which is really awesome, and uh, it's the it's an awesome GPU. And then we have the P40 and the V100 and and P100 and V100. So all these is, is uh, typical use for for AI and machine learning. They included licenses in the in the M60 GPUs and the T4 GPUs, so that's uh, where I would focus uh, for graphic workloads. But you can also look at actually higher GPUs if you have a requirement for larger frame buffers. 
So that's why the P40 definitely makes sense or even having some of the other ones. So M60 has been the one that, that many customers have been using for, for, for some time with M MV6, but you don't have premium storage in this one here. So that's the caveat of not using it, right? So then you want, want to look at the MV3 where you do have a premium storage supported in this. You also get the late, latest generation of the Broadwell processor. Um, but, you know, and it starts with 12 CPUs and then you get a, a one GPU for the M60 uh, and, and, but you do get the NVIDIA license included in the workload. And then we also got the T4 GPU here. So you have a variety of options, uh, how you can scale up, which is pretty awesome. So it starts from one GPU and then all the way up to four. I The four is pretty expensive. <laughs> I have something I don't want to share with you guys, but uh, yeah. Just <laughs> uh, <laughs> P40, P40 GPUs. Uh, so here as well, you can start from one, then go all the way up to uh, two to four in a session. Of course, the more you pay, the more you use. And this, this is another place where it makes sense, right? Uh, I guess for multi-session purposes. Uh, and these ones don't require uh, being your own uh, NVIDIA license workload. And then we got this beast, which is actually having NVIDIA NVIDIA link, which is pretty awesome, right? So a cross link communication between the GPUs and you have eight of these beasts. This is 256 gigabyte frame buffer. How crazy is that? Four of these CPUs, 672 gigabyte memory. I'm pretty sure this cost a lot of money. This is well, drain your wallet quite quickly. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's pretty good for mining, but I'm like, this is this is freaking expensive, but this is typical for, you know, AI and uh, machine learning workloads. Uh, then we got the P100 GPU, and this one also goes from one GPU on all the way up, up. And uh, yeah, there's no NV link in this one. So that was the where the other one was, was different. And NC V3 is uh, also V100 GPUs. The other one was P100. So P V2, NC V2 is P100. The V3 is V100 GPUs. So P is Pascal, V is for Valsa GPU, so it's a new generation GPU from NVIDIA, uh, where you then want to use that if you have that requirement. Now, if you want to start just looking high level what you have, and I've been writing some blogs about it, you the drivers, right, and then I try to, to update. You can also go to the NVIDIA website. They just refreshed this actually this week. Uh, with the information about the, the instances and what is supported with which operating system and how you get with which driver, sorry, and what license you get also. This is quite important things. What I just want to finish off in saying, so with the M60 and the T4, you get an NVIDIA license, so you are allowed to run with a single session, the Quattro VS, and then with the, the multi session, you're, you're allowed to run up to 25 instances per single session with the GPU. That's actually, the, I know, I think the, the legal EULA. So all the GPUs are available uh, on on actually on, on, on all these regions we have here. And I do want to show something. So we got this website here where you can go to the Azure and then you can quickly, if you want to see if you have a requirement for your GPU is, you can actually go in, search, you know, this is exactly what I want. And then you can actually find it quickly, the one you want. I'm like, this is the way to do it. Don't use the other tools. Okay, guys, use this one. This is time I spent crazy time around time just to find the right GPUs. So let's start looking at some some uh, live demos. So something I want to show you guys is typical. So this is a VM I have without any GPU. You can see that right here. So this is the, the D4 SV4. And uh, if you open up uh, a browser, right? This one is working pretty using a lot of CPU, right? It's S3. Like, that's a good example on one where you want to open it up that requires graphics. Oh, oh, your browser isn't using hardware acceleration for rendering. We cannot do work. So there are actually website that doesn't work. So that's interesting. What if I go to my, my GPU instance? I open ex exactly the same. I got my task manager. That's less. That's around 12% less. It's way less. <clears throat> okay. Let me open up the other one. Whoops. 
and now it's working. So this was actually, the, if you saw before, I think just put it in. So this one right here, right? This one is using the GPU. It's also using, you know, but yeah, you're doing, you know, that's a good example on where you have websites that actually don't work. Some might work, but then they just use crazy amount of CPU uh, when you want to look at it. Another thing I just want to show you guys is Windy. If you guys know Windy, it's actually an application for, for wind. It's not a woman. <laughs> I don't know if you know wind, Windy. Uh, so this one is, is quite hungry, um, especially if you look at uh, more. Let's just do it like this. Oops, there we go. So when you were moving around the things, right? You're like, you're looking, interacting, looking at the stuff. It's it's okay, but I, I still see like, it's not like, there's a difference when you work in a GPU. And of course there is, right? You're like, that, that's what you're paying money for. Uh, and also what, how the applications were built. So first of all, the lines are more smoother here. We're also using way less CPU. And even when I move around it, the, the mouse, it's just super fast responding. And that's because it's offloading. This application is made for that. All right. So let's move over to you, Frederick, because I know yep. we don't have much time. Yeah, sure. Uh, please make sure that you close your browser so as we're using the same systems. Perfect. And I will share my screen again. Um, uh, I will do more or less. Um, I, I'm using the same multi-user uh, BBD hosts as Thomas, and I will log in to. Um, first off, uh, this is the same device as I connected to from my Agile device, and I did not get a multi-factor authentication. Um, so. Let's open up um, just the task manager and open up a YouTube video where YouTube is not the best example, definitely. Uh, we have a lot of advertisements. So we are playing. It's actually it's it's actually destroying your 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 teams. <laughs> How it is. Yeah, maybe it is. Um, anyways, um, it plays pretty smooth. Everything is quite fine. Um, the CPU loader is actually not that bad. Um, but yeah, it can certainly be better. Uh, and let's have a look at a different thing. So this is without an NVIDIA GPU. This is just a CPU uh, powered machine. I will open up FBX Review, which is an app where you can um, look at 3D models and um, just the ready rendered uh, model. Now you see I have a plane um, which I'm twisting and turning, and um, it's actually quite flawless on the screen. I'm I'm not sure how well it shows through um, through Teams. But, uh, oh no, it's, it's perfect, it's smooth. And performance on my side is good, but you see the CPU usage. Exactly. This is a multi-user uh, device. Having uh, 10 users at the same time would definitely affect your users. So let's do the same thing on um, a GPU enabled device. Um, Let's see, sorry, the wrong one. Open up Task Manager again, just for the sake of it. Playing in the same. I did notice you have the 3DS X running, right? So that's running in the background. Yeah, it is. But as you see, the GPU is working, not very hard, but it's working. The CPU is quite calm, I would say. Uh, so it will increase the performance and the, the user experience of the video is way better. 
uh, open up the same FBX review application. And this is where the GPU kicks in. So you can see the CPU is commonly at 25%. The GPU is working. Uh, the user experience for me is 100% flawless. Uh, it's uh, so smooth when I twist and turn the, the airplane. So uh, there you definitely see a, a good benefit of uh, hardware acceleration uh, in terms of graphics. Switch to 3D Studio Max as the last uh, demo. Uh, this is just uh, a standard template scene uh, where you see the a preview of the of the rendered video. So if I take the camera and um, just move it around a bit, you see that the performance is amazing. Actually, um, I hope it goes through well in in. Uh, yeah, it does, does, does. Yeah. So it is certainly possible to do this kind of work on um, Azure NVIDIA powered uh, workloads. So I would say that is a wrap up. Um, you, we will stick here, me and me and Thomas. So please, please reach out to us if you have any questions of, on NVIDIA workloads and uh, reach out to me if you have any questions on the Agile topic as a sponsor. So Great. with that, Thomas, I think we are closing down. Yeah, yes. we, are. we are. So thank, thank you guys for, for joining our session. We really appreciate it uh, that you guys been been uh, been joining our session. So I just want to you know show here yeah, that the two guys, the Danish guy and the, the Swedish guy, doing this great session. So okay, thank you for doing it. It was really fun doing it together with you, Frederick. Yeah, same to you, Thomas. Uh, sadly, we didn't do the Fortnite demo, but yeah. Uh, we do some really recording and then yeah i i think actually freak did the fortnite demo as well <laughs> maybe it did uh, yeah i think so uh but thank you so much for for being here and for sharing this and i i do hope like like you mentioned i think most of the organizations i work with have never like thought about using gpus in just general purpose machines uh, and and haven't realized the value of that uh, so I hope that this will inspire organizations to create a better user experience using NVIDIA GPUs. Certainly. And uh, like Frederick said, um, Thomas and Frederick will be hanging around in the live event for a few more minutes. Uh, and then you can, of course, reach both of them on social media uh, for any follow up questions and so on. Uh, most of their contact details should be on the WVD um, page. <laughs>